Greetings from occupied New York City. This is Truth to Power News, bringing you the beat from the street on this sunny September 17th. Today marked the one-year anniversary of Occupy Wall Street, the original creative organizing action that gave birth to the Occupy movement, which has since spread like wildfire across our nation and the world. Since the movement's inception, the mainstream media has done its best to downplay the significance of this burgeoning populist resistance, making a particular point this year to proclaim the movement dead in its tracks. To the contrary, what we witnessed today and into the night refuted all such claims and proved without doubt that this movement, the idea that is Occupy, is only gaining momentum and getting stronger with each passing moment. Beginning at 7 a.m., the actions revolved around the theme that all roads lead to Wall Street and were comprised of four separate blocks of affinity groups working towards the collective goal of disrupting business as usual. The blocks themselves were designated as the 99%, debt, eco, and education, and their locations separated Manhattan's financial district into four corresponding physical zones with targeted corporate locations, pre-planned and spontaneous actions, jovial mischief-making, and heated confrontations. A central action to the day was the People's Wall, which was to serve as a mobile barrier of pedestrian traffic, circulating seemingly without reason in an attempt to protect those people in the middle who chose to sit in the streets and practice nonviolent civil disobedience. Several of the demonstrations reflected months of planning and included provisions for alternative plans of execution, should a sizable obstacle manifest itself in the moment. This actually happened several times throughout the morning, and we were so impressed by the ability of the groups and individuals present to assess the efficacy of their actions in the midst of the organized chaos, and to disperse and regroup if they found they were losing ground towards their goal. A perfect example was given by the Strike Debt Zone Affinity Group, whom we followed for the first part of the morning. As the People's Wall began to be kenneled by the New York Police Department in an increasingly aggressive manner, a herd-like mentality manifested within the crowds. While adrenaline set in, participants attempted to navigate the narrow, barricaded, maze-like streets and began to form as a march instead of an effective, fluid, and dispersed human shield. Texts were sent forth via the communications team off-site, encouraging affinity groups to disperse, reconvene, and refocus on the task at hand. Once regrouped at our point of origination, we watched the Strike Debt Affinity Group hold an impromptu meeting with a loose but effective consensus-based decision-making model. The plan was quickly agreed to and called for the group of hundreds to break into groups of 20 to 25 people, who would then target different locations as effectively as they could. We followed one such group as they went civilian, parting ways and dissolving into the commuter pedestrian crowd, only to meet up five minutes later at the corporate headquarters of J.P. Morgan Chase, and upon making the call, rushed the revolving doors, slid past security, and reveled in the peaceful disruption of business within the bank. Several arrests were made, the first of 160 to come throughout the day, and included acclaimed NYU professor Andrew Ross and our own Truth to Power News videographer, Chops. As of the time of this recording, we are still unsure as the Chops' whereabouts and safety. After the morning of actions, a spokes council meeting was held in Battery Park, during which affinity groups and even some unaffiliated gave reports about their actions, their concerns, triumphs, and plans for the rest of the day. The meeting served to enthuse the distraught, rejuvenate the weary, and refocus the thousands of participants before the rest of the actions ensued. After sharing in a chant and cries of fervor, the groups dispersed again and headed towards their targets. Many more demonstrations occurred, and as our numbers grew, so did those of the police, who made their presence palpable, but failed to deter us from our goal. For a movement that is supposed to be dead, to be nothing of note or concern, there were droves of law enforcement out in the streets, on every corner and waiting in every alcove, begging the question of just what this city and governments across the nation are so afraid of. After trading hours closed, the day of resistance moved to Zuccotti Park, renamed Liberty Plaza, not only for its proximity to Liberty Street, but also due to its significance as the birthplace of the Occupy Wall Street movement, the mouthpiece for a rising generation of those that actively seek liberty in all realms of existence. 
After revelry with community and labor allies, a people's forum was held, during which legal supporters gave rep reports on the status of our arrested allies, and avenues of networking and project building were shared and explored. For about a half hour, the thousands gathered at the park, grouped into circles of around 10 people each, comprised of those seated next to them, to engage in conversations about where the movement will go during its second year, to build upon one another's experiences throughout the day and throughout our lives. The scene was electric and inspiring and so incredibly fruitful. It reeked of life and stood as another testament to the lasting power of our collective idea. We gathered many amazing interviews throughout the day, including the Reverend Billy of the Church of Stop Shopping and gospel singer and longtime activist Michelle Schacht. While en route to jail support to see if there were any updates on Chops' status, we witnessed the forces of the NYPD amassing just blocks from Zuccotti, with school buses for future arrestees in tow, preparing for what we could only assume would be a brutal and unnecessary preemptive eviction. As the night wrapped up at the park, though, birthday cakes were served and devoured by physically hungry yet spiritually satiated new friends. And even as the riot cops approached the scene, it was wonderfully clear that the Occupy movement isn't going anywhere. It's growing everywhere. And we look forward to what this next year of growth and movement hold in store.